So it all started in 2019, man. Mattel gave us the WWE Elite Top Picks Wave featuring Braun Strowman, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Seth Rollins. And what they said in motion was pretty much, let's re-release some of our top guys so that we can continue to get these guys out on the shelves. And I think that's where this progression of re-releasing the same exact figures over and over again kind of started. That led to what we are in today currently, which is Mattel re-releasing quite a few figures. So Mattel has been making WWE action figures since 2010, which is 14 years ago, which makes me want to physically vomit. So people will probably feel like, you know, some of these figures do need to be re-released release since technology and everything has come so far. I mean, these head sculpts are getting better and better by the day. Arms are now double jointed, which honestly should have came way earlier. However, man, we're going to discuss all these things today, and I want to know down in the comment section below what you guys actually feel about Mattel and WWE re-releasing these action figures in what seems like a ton of different lines across their entire catalog of action figures. But like I said, it did start out with the Top Picks line, which isn't, you know, necessarily a bad thing. I enjoy the Top Picks line. I actually look forward to the Top Picks wave because, like you can see in this in behind me and in my entire collection across my channel. I do really enjoy multiple figures of the same talent. I like all the different Cody Rhodes figures. I enjoy all the Roman Reigns. I enjoy all the Finn Balor figures. Where it gets kind of off for me, well back in the day this this kind of got on my nerves, is when they would re-release the same damn Braun Strowman figure over and over again. We used to talk about it all the damn time on the channel and I'm not done talking about it. But like I said, I really enjoy the Top Picks wave. I think that there's a lot of great figures that come out of the Top Picks wave, especially when they repaint a character that has really good attires. And sometimes Sometimes they're really clever about how they re-release certain figures and certain gears. Like I talked about with Braun Strowman, they do the same thing with Roman Reigns nowadays. And we have seen some other characters such as Matt Riddle. We've seen Rey Mysterio done this way. We've also seen Seth Rollins. I mean, they did put the belt buckle on there, so it was a slight change. But we have seen this over the history of Mattel with the Top Picks line. But then they introduced a new re-release line, or a quote-unquote re-release line, with the Greatest Hits line, which I thought was a pretty damn good idea at the time. I mean, honestly, this isn't a video about tearing this down. I think this is more of a video about just kind of discussing because I like the discussion topics. I want to know what you think down in the comment section below. But then we got the Greatest Hits line, which was going to be re-releases of WWE Elite Action Figures in Mattel's past that were either A, hard to, to obtain, maybe they had distribution problems, maybe they didn't show up in a majority of the parts of the country. You know, a lot of people didn't have a, a quite a, the opportunity to own these figures, so they re-release them modern day with double-jointed arms, a true effects scan most of the time. Sometimes those previous figures had cartoony looking head sculpts, but as time has passed, we have gotten the true effects technology. We've seen quite a few of those so far, and I do believe we have more greatest hits coming. I don't think this is a line that's going to die anytime soon, which Again, I don't really mind it, but we'll get into that. Then we were introduced to the ultimate greatest hits line, and this is kind of where I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know about this one. because I feel like you know they really haven't been out that long. Ultimate editions weren't, you know, there aren't, they aren't this artifact. They're not from 2010 or something like that, man. This isn't a line that is. I mean, I feel like a lot of people would probably feel like the ultimate edition line is still quite new for the most part. I know we've had a slew of ultimate editions. We're approaching a hundred, I think now. I don't know the exact number of it, but we are approaching more and more figures each and every year. They're, they're releasing more. There's three in a wave now, so I do believe, you know, Ultimate Editions are still early on in their in their history. We're on series number 21. We do have store exclusives and whatnot, but we are pretty early on still in the Ultimate Edition saga. But they introduced the Greatest Hits versions of that, re-releasing older versions of Greatest Hits figures. So when they originally started, they didn't have butterfly joints. The ab crunch was a bit different. You know, the arms still had the pins in them, which I don't mind sometimes, you know. But they added butterfly joints to previously released Ultimate Editions that were going for hundreds of dollars on the aftermarket, mind you. Which is why I think they're really capitalizing on these re-release waves, because they know there's money to be made, and if there's money to be made, then they're, these figures, in their eyes, they have a reason to exist. And there's going to be a market for it. There's so many people. How many people out there, or do you think that there's a more of a market for people who want to purchase these old figures, or do you think there's a side that own these old figures and do not want that, don't want them re-released for value's sake? I think there's way more people out there that want these figures. But you have the Ultimate Edition Greatest Hits, which is where I think I kind of, I don't know, I kind of lost it there just because, the, the you know, in one hand, the Greatest Hits figures are supposed to be figures that, you know, are no longer in distribution, figures that are harder to obtain, etc. And then with the Ultimate Editions, it was like, oh, well, we literally just had this release not too long ago, so I don't know. But then we get into the Target exclusive Legends Greatest Hits. So now we have a second Greatest Hits dubbed wave, and these are figures that are Greatest Hits or re-releases of previously released Legends 
elite figures or talent. Not necessarily Legends figures in the Legends line. It's more of Legend talent getting re-releases of previously released Mattel WWE action figures of that specific talent. So now at this point, you have the top picks wave, you have the greatest hits, you have the ultimate greatest hits, and the Legends greatest hits. Essentially, four re-release waves coming out with anything new as well. And then now, as of a couple weeks ago, or a week ago now, we have the From the Vault series, which is essentially another Greatest Hits version of figures, which is previously released, highly sought after, I would argue the most sought after action figures, including Ringside Exclusive figures. Dubbed the name Ringside Exclusive. They are Ringside Exclusive. They do feature the Hardcore Kane, which is Ringside Exclusive, and they're in the future, they're going to continue to do this. This is only Series 1. We know that more series are going to be coming, of course. But on the business side of things, it's completely genius. It's completely genius. People are going to want these figures, man. I mean, how many times have I set up in here and said, dang, I really w I really want my hands on that Elite 7 Shawn Michaels. That's a figure I've never had the opportunity to own. I've been really wanting new Dudley Boy Elites, and I know we're probably, they did recently sign Legends deals, which is given while we're getting these from the Vault Series figures. I do believe we're going to see Ultimate Editions of them. I do believe we're going to see Legends figures of them. We're going to get more Dudley, so that's something I've wanted for a long time, so I have no problem there. The Defining Moment Cena, one of my favorite Mattels of all time. Hardcore Kane, another figure that I love. So, I mean, dude, I'm all for the, these highly sought after figures being re-released, and I really think it's genius, to be honest with you, but I know it's... And it really seems like the fan base of these Mattel WWE action figures are really intrigued with it too. They really are excited for these figures because like I said, there's a lot of people out there that really missed out on these the first time or you know, the collector market has grew significantly since 2010, I would argue. You had figure collectors, but I think the Mattel really brought people back in. You know, back in the day when you were collecting figures, yeah, there's a lot of people that are longtime figure collectors, right, from childhood up to current day and whatnot. But I would say that, you know, people put those things away and they, you know, they have responsibilities, their you know, their focus shifts, whatnot, and then they come back once they see this brand new figure of a moment, right? Like you take your, I don't know, freaking defining moments mankind or something like that, man, where it's the, it's got all the details. It's got the tacks in the back. His his teeth are missing. He's bleeding from his mouth. This is, oh my God, I remember sitting down and watching that with my dad and, then, you know, maybe their dad isn't with us anymore and things like that, man, and they really get it. And not only is it an action figure or a toy of that person, I mean, you're, tie, you're tying in special memories of their past, tying in special memories of nostalgia that plays into that, which get, brings people people a lot of joy. So they're like, man, that is so awesome. It's so incredibly detailed. Look at this. And then bam, that's that's what it is. Which is a whole other subject in itself. I, I We need to study this. And I think it's more of like it ties into your emotions. So then it leads you to buy things in, the, in that nostalgia department. But I've talked about that before. Like what is it about me or other people that want to purchase seven inch plastic versions of wrestlers that we grew up watching? What is that? Why, why, do we do, why are we doing this? What is this? And I guess it boils down to fun or uh, nostalgia like we mentioned before or hobbies and whatnot. But it's just, it's just a very interesting thing. Thing, right? Something I've wanted to talk about. But today I wanted to talk about the re-releases and all those different things, man. So I would love to know down in the comment section below what you guys feel about all these re-release waves and all those things. And uh, please bear with me as through this video, I look like I could have, I, I, I just crawled away from a car accident that I got run over by seven trucks. So I do appreciate that. However, man, huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate you fellas over there, man. Thank you guys so very much for all that you do, man. You guys are the absolute beast. Actually just dropped a video on the arena yesterday or last night talking about some upgrades we made to the arena. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out. But I greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I want to know all of your thoughts down in the comment section below. So please leave me your thoughts of all this down in the comment section below, man. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I'll see you next time. Have a blessed one.